Hello and welcome to the Dinosaur for week 21, another seven curious interesting things I saw last week and as ever if you'd like any consultancy, workshops, innovation stuff, all that sort of good stuff, find me on LinkedIn, it's what I do. Uh, this is BrainBridge, difficult to say, and their video went viral, shall we say, that old word, uh, on the socials, or at least the socials that I look at uh, during the week, and this was a machine that can literally do the head transplant. The whole point of this is it's quite a tricky process, so therefore, if you take the humans out of it, you can transfer the head, and I do apologise if this is a little bit uh, gory or makes you squeamish, I just look away now. Um, however, the whole point of this was, let's uh, let's use a, a robot to do it, uh, it can sever the head, it can join all the bits and bobs back up, and and we can use this special nondescript goop that they've developed that can actually help when they inject it. Apparently it's polyethylene glycol, which if you look it up is a common uh, constituent of things like laxatives and skincare products. So <laughs> there you go, make of that what you will. Um, however, this entire video, which uh, got lots of people a little bit confused and a little bit hopeful, is actually pretty much just a fake. Uh, well, we say fake, it is an example of how it could work. So they even explain at the end of it that when your brain is uh, recovering, they have this little device on your head that can read your brain waves and then translate your thoughts. So they've thought about everything, but this was from a couple of years ago. It was a sort of proof of concept, really. However, the company behind it is actually using it. Whoever's been replying to it saying, actually, it's really interesting. I'd love this. Um, how can I get involved? That's kind of what it's about. They are a company that uses AI to look at chemicals, for instance. So they're just kind of using this to scope out if anybody's interested. And if you are, might you want to invest in it in the future? This is going to happen at some point, just not right now. So if you were uh, maybe seeing this and thought it was uh, it was available right now, unfortunately it isn't. We're a fair, a fair few years off and also morally plus technically uh, we're a way away. Uh, this is uh, Robot Killer Snails. Now, obviously it's not killer snails, it's just robot snails, uh, but this is from the researchers at the University of Bristol. Uh, well done to you for doing this. Uh, these are you know, obviously inspired by snails or mollusks, and you can hang these things upside down. This is a table, a glass table, with 20 grams of weight on it. Uh, likewise, you can make these, these artificial snails, which essentially just use kind of water to suck to some glass. And as you see, they are untethered at this point. There is no electrics going to it. Um, but they can also, which I think is the best one, they can remove smudges from walls or, uh, <laughs> or whiteboards, I guess. So if you do run workshops, this might be exactly what you do. You leave the room, you high five everybody, you press a button and a special snail wipes the whiteboard for you. There you go. Um, the whole point of this is looking at uh, obviously robotics and how we might be climbing structures in the future with robotics and mobility. But there you go. Well done to the University of Bristol. That's very impressive. Uh, this is also a very impressive project, although it's pretty much just calling out just how absurd the space junk has got. There are one, uh, 160 million pieces of space junk, apparently. So this project kind of takes the mickey a little bit by creating constellations out of those bits of space junk. So you can travel around the world looking at one of those 1. Uh, 160 million pieces and they make constellations just like you would do in the normal sky. So there you go. Um, now, if you click on each one of the pieces of junk, and you can only do the ones in the constellations, it's not every single one of the 160 million, but if you do click on them, it'll tell you how much it costs to remove it. I like this 404 constellation, that's very good. And as you see, on average, it costs about sort of 13, 15 million or so to uh, remove one piece of space junk. So there you go. Uh, so it is a problem. Um, looking at you, Elon Musk, stop putting junk into space. Uh, and there you go. So um, there you go, space. Google AI uh, reported on this last week, and this is their uh, AI overview. So some of you will have noticed if you Google something, you might get the AI overview. And this uh, was controversial or is controversial because it might start sucking up the clicks that would have gone onto websites, paid for advertising, people's jobs, etc. However, it turns out, and who'd have thunk, that the results that the AI is putting forwards are not as great as we might have thought. So for instance, if you need to change your blinker, then it suggests uh, replacing your blinker fluid, which of course is nonsense because it's electronic. Uh, if for instance, uh, you say, hey, running with scissors, it says uh, it's actually quite controversial, but it's good fun. Um, it boosts your immune system, it improves your blood flow, and it provides mild facial muscle exercise because you'd be laughing as you run with scissors. Again, absurd. And how do you prevent cheese from sliding off a pizza where you put one eighth of a cup of glue in your pizza, which is daft. So Google are scrambling to manually uh, take down any of these sort of search phrases or remove any of the search phrases that might lead to these sorts of nonsense uh, answers. It's even told people to jump off bridges and all that sort of stuff. So. Um, not a great look. Uh, obviously, Google's slightly scrambling to keep up with everybody else at the moment, but um, yeah, who'd have thought it went a little bit wrong. This is the Diamond Saddle. Uh, this is from um, Mornura. 
And uh, again, uh, saddle innovation. Who'd have thought we needed some of that? So gone are the front part of the saddle parts that usually rub on your bits and bobs. And uh, we've now replaced it with these wings that sit out to the side. So you're essentially sitting on a bench whilst you're on your bike. This is specifically at the moment made for mountain biking, although clearly it will work for anything. Um, but there you go. So um, AI has been used uh, to create this design. Of course it has, but they don't actually say how or why. Um, and also, you know, it's available. It's about 200 pounds. I think it is something like that. It's relatively expensive. People have tested it and they said if you're on a mountain bike and you're doing things like manuals, which is like a wheelie, then it can actually cut into the back of your legs a little bit or you can actually feel the pressure. So it's not perfect for everybody, but there you go. Um, go and watch the videos on the website. It's kind of interesting. Uh, not news. Who'd have thought we've got a new knot as well? So in knot innovation, um, I thought we needed to actually talk about these because it's quite cool. Um, this is the Bears Grip Hitch. It is a new knot and is a type of kamikaze knot, as they are called. There are four types of kamikaze knot, and now there is a fifth one. Kamikaze knots are essentially self-destructing. They will actually undo themselves in certain situations. Many of them are very unstable, so you can't really use them for anything that important. So this one, as you're saying, is a brand new one. It has two levels of failsafe, essentially. So you lower down the important thing, you can shake it, it's not going to come off. If you wiggle it in a certain way, it will first undo the first knot, which you've just seen, and then it'll undo the second knot with another wiggle. So you've got two levels essentially of safety in that knot. Obviously, don't use this for abseiling or whatever, but uh, we have a new knot. Who'd have thunk? So uh, well done to uh, DJ from the uh, Bear Essentials, a uh, good uh, YouTube channel as well, if you're interested in survival and outdoor pursuits. But there you go, we have a new knot. Amazing news. Uh, this is Scarlett Johansson, and you may well have seen this. Uh, this is uh, the launch, I think last week, week before, of OpenAI's uh, 4.0, or 4.0 actually, uh, their new GPT, and they launched it with voices. So if you download the app right now and you go into essentially the, the third part of the app, it'll then say, hey, would you like to actually have a conversation? And yes, you can. As you can see, I've screenshotted what I saw when I just logged in. Uh, there is a voice missing. It was called Sky. And that was the one that sounded incredibly like Scarlett Johansson. So clearly everybody who knew Scarlett Johansson or had seen the film Her went, hang on a minute, that sounds exactly like Scarlett Johansson. However, it wasn't licensed, wasn't asked for. And even worse than that, um, some Altman who was is behind uh, OpenAI asked uh, Scarlett Johansson many years ago, would you be the voice? And she went, absolutely not. And yet it still sounds like that at the moment. So it's been removed. And uh, it's, again, it's not a good look because we need transparency from AI companies right now. And quite frankly, if Scarlett Johansson cannot get some sort of um, conclusion to this that everybody feels safe, then what hope have the rest of us got, quite frankly? So there you go. So that's quite interesting. Watch that one. It is uh, an evolving one. So, um, and we have a, a bonus and finally. So thank you to Ken Brown who left a good comments last week uh, and, and made me aware of Science International, uh, which is an amazing program that I didn't know about in the 1970s. Uh, American program, which is why I didn't know about it, but go and check it out. I'll leave a link in the uh, description below. It is pretty much the prototype Dino saw. Um, so this has got Joseph uh, Campanella and uh, Tiu Leek, who were the presenters of it, in little boxes in the corner whilst they present over innovative in the things that have just been invented. So very much the DNS or I'm really chuffed. With, uh, uh, thank you to Ken for showing me that. Uh, have, a, have a look in the link this uh, description down below. It's worth looking at a few episodes of that. It's good fun. Um, hopefully that was useful. Hopefully it was interesting. If it was, uh, I'll see you next week. And um, yeah, subscribe.